But right, we're back here, of course, the time to have a look at what the papers are saying. Definitely. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with uh, the Punch newspaper. But just before then, let's let you know that we have Chris Kende Wandu who joins us this morning. Uh, the detribalized Nigerian. I like to just remember that he's also an arbitrator, uh, you know, the United Kingdom, by the way. But he's right here with us in Lagos. Chris, it's always a delight to have you join us every time on Off the Press. It's always a delight joining to you every Tuesday morning. Good morning. Um, All right. Chris, we, we will start off. Kofi is here. I'm sure that you, you're seeing him now. Uh, we'll start off with the Punch newspaper. The Punch says, Are you must go? G5 governors. Atiku come clash. Uh, so, well, I can't wait to share your thoughts on this one because prior to the elections, uh, the same G5 governors were insisting that IU must go. And just recently, we also heard that a local award or a local government, you know, uh, had suspended uh, or passed the vote of no confidence on IU. And one would ask, what's the importance of all of this shortly after the elections? Uh, then Benway Court FM's IU suspension, just like I rightly mentioned, adjourns case till April the 17th. It is morally uh, offensive for IU to remain chairman after electoral defeat. That's what the G5 comes. So it feels like the energy is 100. They're not giving up. But another question to ask is, were there involvement of anti-party activities with these governors? Only NEC uh, or NEC can remove me. IU is still saying that, hey, we stand here. Uh, we care all this selfie, says Atiku and PCC. Unfortunately, uh, the confusion still continues. Reps invite Minister Femmes over $2.4 billion oil sale. Don't travel to state of origin for census, says uh, the National Population Census. Well, how much, of, I mean, this information, uh, do you think that a lot of Nigerians have this information as to you don't need to travel to your state of origin before you're counted, you can be counted wherever it is that you are? Nigeria can defeat terrorism like the United Kingdom. That's what Boris Johnson is quoted to say. And just before move away, Ngige Mefieli meet NLC over planned strike. Banks queue persists. I will just leave it at that for the want of time. All right, quickly to the nation, we have the following headlines. Court order restraining IU uh, deepens PDP's post-poll uh, crisis. National chair dismisses suspension. Wiki backs action. Uh, supplementary polls hold April 15 in Oyo, Imo, Edo, others. And uh, how to make Nigerians unleash potential by ex-UK PM. Uh, it's a picture of Boris Johnson there, so he probably is the one who made that statement. Uh, Ngigi meets him immediately at Jero to prevent NLC uh, strike. I'm not always comfortable with these meetings between government and uh, labor. Colloquium put off for prayers to mark Tilibu's birthday. 77% Nigerian women risk skin cancer from using toning uh, cream. Messi, I think you should share that information <laughs> with, with your fellow ladies because we tell them they won't believe us. Uh, US, US is $100 million for. West, five West African nations, Kamala Harris has been in Ghana, and she made that announcement yesterday to fight, I think, uh, insecurity or something like that. Uh, so some of the... Uh, uh, Yousaf to become Scotland leader. Um, uh, Scottish nationalists yesterday picked uh, Hamza Yousaf to be the country's next leader after a bitterly fought uh, contest that exposed deep divisions in his party. Um, as you can tell them from the name... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if he's a native um, uh, a Scotsman. Anyway, uh, these are the headlines on the front page of The Nation. Okay, let's uh, turn attention from The Nation newspaper this morning. Quickly, we have the Daily Independent uh, paper. He says, PDP crisis deepens as court sacks Yorcha are you? And uh, that's boldly written on the Daily Independent now. War has just started. What sort of war are we talking about? Governor Wiki tells IU and orders. <laughs> Again, you find troops kill 10 insurgents and repels Israel attack on Borno military base. Group protests at United States and United Kingdom embassies and demand the arrest of INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakobo. Uh, then again, you find uh, the story. Fake moto insurance take over market amid premium hike. Then, please to 
collaborate with INEC to prosecute electoral offenders, and INEC holds supplementary elections in Kebi Adamawa, April the 15th. Uh, that headline might just be dominating all of the papers this morning. All right, let's take a final one from uh, the Daily Trust uh, on Tuesday. The big story there, queues persist as Nigerians hoard Naira notes. POS operators mop up cash at ATMs, uh, charges drop to 100 Naira per 1,000 Naira. Orders ha will have their fingers burnt, burnt to CBN. It may feel the urges NLC to shelf protest, okay? Uh, such a very interesting meeting. <laughs> um, more from that paper, Adama governorship in Tiri kicks as uh, Binani demands a result review. Gunmen kill three NSC, the officers in Imo State. Man remanded for selling father to Richelis for 1.8 million uh, Naira. Uh, PDP crisis, court restrains IU from parading himself as a, a national chairman. Uh, but saw the stories on the front page of the Daily Trust. Um, uh, Chris K. Nwandu, let's start with this, this big one <laughs> on the front page of Daily Trust. Um, uh, the paper says uh, Nigerians are holding Naira notes. I don't know. Um, are Nigerians the ones holding Naira notes or in need of Naira notes? Because I've always asked, you know, people who say stop holding, I'll ask what is holding. Um, because I mean, if I have my money, uh, I'm giving him his uh, 10,000 Naira and I'm putting it in my pocket. Uh, will he tell me I'm holding it or keep it at home? Am I holding it? Uh, isn't the problem the fact that the Central Bank of Nigeria you know, largely uh, significantly reduced the amount of currency it released, you know, to the public and tell told Nigerians to go cashless, electronic banking. Of course, uh, uh, when there's scarcity, there, of course, there'll be the need to hold. And uh, so it's a total reflection of the situation on ground. Um, you cannot expect me to, the little 8,000 Naira or 10,000 Naira that I have that you want me to go and drop it in the bank again and can spend another uh, uh, two, three days to get it back. So definitely it is not wise. And so Nigerians are getting a bit wise on, on that issue. And that is why you see them that uh, So if you say they are holding it, they are not holding it, they are holding it, it's not their money. It is it's only when they, someone else can say they're holding it, it's their money. And because they know the challenges involved, that the little they have, Expand it the way it is, then there will be a problem. Uh, but the situation report shows that it's, the system is improving a little bit. Um, the old notes are not being spent uh, on the ATMs, and so although the queues are, are still um, long, but not as long as it used to be. I was at one of the Good Generation Bank yesterday, and I saw the queue, and they went into the bank, and I saw them dispensing money. That's have not had been seen for over close to two, a month or two. Um, they are dispensing money to people and where are collecting. The problem, out of all the time I spent in the bank, I didn't see a single new Naira note. All those new Naira notes that they made, they say it is printed. Um, I didn't see any single one. It was just the good Naira note that were dispensed. I asked myself, what was the essence of that policy? What was the essence of printing Naira to that not going to be able to Nigerians? And don't forget that billions and billions Naira uh, was sunk into that um, uh, that venture. And um, you continue to ask yourself, what was the rationale behind it? If you know you're not going to get it, why did they do that and make Nigerians suffer that much? But I hope that it will improve. And don't forget that um, NLC is calling for a strike starting from tomorrow to picket all CBN branches all over Nigeria. And I know that there was a meeting between the Central Bank, the Governor, the Minister of Labor, and NSC yesterday. And the issue is being put into And the NSC that said they'll come out with uh, a statement a few hours time, whether that strike will continue or not. Therefore, the military to have come down from his uh, high horse, uh, from his high horse uh, to come down to talk to any, um, NLC, goes to show that he knows the gravity of what is at stake. And he has to do what needs to be done. Well, um, Chris, let's look at uh, the Punch newspaper. Are you must go? G5 governors uh, take a campaign in clash or clashing, if you like to say. H how do you respond to this? Uh, the G5 governors have not given up on the fact that IU still has to go. They have been consistent. Before this time, you can't have you know uh, the domination of the North all through. It, it has to go. And up, after the elections, they are still insistent, uh, very, you know, saying that, uh, you know, are you must go? 
Nothing that's in my local parlance of the people. Uh, there's a local parlance that we say that Chibo and Nozo. Uh, that basically means that every other morning, new story. That is what it means. And so, and that is the plight of uh, uh, the PDP now. I know people will be laughing. They say, this one, I'm putting you on your back. But <laughs> what I'm saying now is a pure evil. And if crisis rocking PDP is a, a story foretold, and uh, we thought that with the election, um, a, a, a party that lost the election will be able to put its ass together and see whether it can be put, what it can be put to get uh, from um, from the tribunal uh, over its lost mandate, uh, a mandate that they believe they want, which is debatable. But rather they are digging in. And uh, I watched the, um, the interview by Governor uh, Yeso Wiki um, yesterday, where he was uh, uh, practically sending the, the chairman of national chairman of, uh, of PDP to the Gallo threw him under the bus. And some of the issues being raised that um, you have to look at it from both ends. First and foremost, PDP in itself um, has not acted right because if, and that is why people like me, I don't have any sympathy for someone like uh, Atika Bubaka, just by all this crying about the election. He saw this coming. I had the opportunity to be able to right the wrongs by being able to bring everybody together. A good politician will do everything when possible to bring everybody to his side irrespective of their feelings or how they feel, and try to go into the world with your best level. Um, obviously, the Nigeria played the Guinea Bissau and the one one zero. You know, we lost the first match one zero. So Nigeria went to that uh, second leg match with our best level, and we we're able to get a victory there in Guinea uh, Bissau. That is the same thing in politics. In politics, there is no permanent enemy. All you do is to be able to bring everybody. Then, when you get what you want, then you can be able to act the way you want to act. But Article that the PDP refused to do the date for. And they lost the opportunity of having five of their governors supporting them at the election. And that is how you can see the result. Now you, you, you came out to say you are suspending them for anti party activities. Well agreed. Uh, to me, I also look at it from the point of anti party activities. And anybody that uh, does that is not fit enough um, to be in the party. But the question you also ask yourself you as um, uh, as a party, have you done the need? So now the uh, uh, the fight has shifted to the local arena, where the chairman of uh, the uh, PDP had, it was suspended by his own word, and they say one he has not paid his due for about six years. Two that uh, for anti-party activity, whatever they mean by that, they say he worked for the opposition party. Then uh, yesterday, so there was a court order restraining him from parading himself as the national chairman of of PDP. That is multiple for him. So uh, let's see how this plan, but this is not the best of time for PDP. And I hope that they'll be able to put their ass together um, and be able to put the tribunal as a party, as a one united party, um, and see what they can be able to get from the, yeah, yeah. Uh, from the tribunal. Yeah, Chris, I mean, I know we try to, you know, look at the balance and legalize some of these things, but uh, some, some would say this is just funny politicking and the politicians being themselves we're wasting our time for 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 things like this. I mean, when when uh, in what in what breath can uh, the uh, the world chairman of uh, a whole party like PDP remove the chairman of the party? I mean, does it does it sound does it make sense to you? I know that we're not just talking about making sense. No. Um, but no, I, I, I want just, I want you to recollect. Sorry, please. Uh, what happened in the case case of Uche Secondos? You know, what happened in the case of Uche Secondus is exactly the same thing that happened. And it was these same PDP people whom Wiki is fighting today who agreed to say, okay, fine, if you want Secondus gone, we would allow him go. You brought him in, no problem. Secondus, please step aside. Let's have a fresh uh, party primary. They had a fresh <coughs> party primary. And the party primary introduced Ayu as national chairman. And of course, uh, Wiki went to the presidential uh, primary, uh, party congress, sorry. Wiki went to the presidential primary and then he contested on the IU, basically giving him legitimacy. So why are we back here? Yes, um, you know, politicians, the way they do their things, uh, they don't behave like rational human beings like us, uh, with all sense of humility. Uh, but let us also look at, uh, we talk about second, this has also happened in ABC. If, uh, let's not forget how 
Adam Sosumole was also removed. You know that it was his word in Edo State that uh, first of all suspended him from um, in the from the world. Uh, he was the national chairman of APC, and that was where his problem started. And before he knew it, related in the court and they had serious issues. Before he was now, he now left. The same thing has played out in the APC before, not just PT. If you also know currently, the APCA is enmeshed in some kind of crisis. Um, so I saw somebody a few days ago saying that it got a, a court, um, a, a Supreme Court uh, judgment. Um, Pronouncing him as the authentic chairman of Abga. But some others have come to say that there was nothing like that. So it's neither here nor there. So that is how this uh, politicians rule. But back to your what you're saying. Yes, um, it was also part of the decisions on part of people like you know, let's take for example UK one. The um, uh, secondus, which is secondus was nominated by uh Neso Wiki. Uh, secondus is from River State, same state with uh, this week. But when he fell out with him, he, he, he now started looking for other alternative and how to be able to deal with him. He was one of those that chose Ayu, um, 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 Ayu, uh, Iyocha Ayu, as the national chairman of, uh, of PDP. Um, I remember that was vividly uh, uh, how he went. Um, Wiki was one of those that solidly supported the emergence of uh, Iyocha Ayu. Where yeah, they now fell out was when it got to the primaries of the PDP presidential, uh, or the presidential primaries, where um, Article 1 and Wiki lost. And since then, there have not been any peace within the PDP. And uh, he was able to just fight other PDP governors. But what I'm saying in essence, there is no part that he who comes to equity, as we say in God, comes with clean hands. Is uh, Wiki himself, is he clean? He came out to say he was not going to support the president of his party. And he was going to support a particular candidate. The same thing with other um, governors, uh, with the so called G G5 governors. And that was serious and the party. And he was going to be suspended. He quickly went to the court and they uh, got an injunction. That was what saved him. But the others were not that like, people like uh, uh, Fayo Shi, Ayin Payo Sanyin. Ayin Payo Sanyin said he was going to support the candidate of the APC, governorship candidate of the APC in the Boeing State. He's a PDP member, a strong member of the party. So he was going to support. He came out really to say that. And so and so many of our say was not is going to support Tinubu. So if you look at all this, what I just look at, you just say that it's just a high level of indiscipline on the part of politicians. But the problem we've also had is that party discipline, the parties are no longer as strong as they used to be. I remember in the days of MPN, UPN, NMPP, PROP, and the GMPP in the 80s, where the party was supreme. But now the governors have hijacked the parties, and whatever they say is what happens, and that is why we have the issue. Even in APC, there are a lot of anti party. Look at somebody like Marafa and what happened in uh, Zamfara State. Uh, you could see how um, also how Zamfara had lost um, uh, lost to APC uh, PDP in this governorship election. There are so many other um, uh, instances, but their own is not as pronounced as that of PDP. PDP's president is a heart that is divided by uh, uh, on his own and uh, by itself. I'm just wondering how. This is going to pan out. I watched somebody like um, Chief Olabode George he was talking yesterday about unity. But Olabode George came in, in Lagos, where he comes from, supported the candidate of the Labour Party instead of his own PDP. So what are we talking about? So you can see that is a who has supported that is a, a total disarray. I, I wonder how they're going to go, come out of this. Mm. All right, Chris, uh, just quickly, the police is saying they will collaborate with INEC to prosecute electoral offenders. And I know that Nigerians have been big on how much of justice those who have been involved in truncating the electoral process and those who have uh, you know, engaged in all sorts, especially looking at the last elections. Your thoughts, do you think that you know, this is just a statement or is a statement of reality? It's a statement, it's just rhetoric, messy, but I would like it or not. It's just rhetoric. Those that perpetrated the 2019 uh, 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 electoral uh, crisis and fraud have then been prosecuted. Um, the INEC came out yesterday to say that it has budgeted 3 billion naira for prosecution of electoral. I, the, we have, I said it with another number that which is the uh, uh, election tribunal, as it were. If we're going to have an election tribunal that uh, is basically um, tell us to us uh, prosecuting um, offenders, then it should be much easier. But the same people we are talking about are going to take conventional courses that is already congested, very, very congested. 
and they know what it takes to get justices in our courts, from moving from the lowest court to the highest court, then it becomes an improper. That is what, two, the INEC does not have power of prosecution. Most often than not, some of this uh, prosecution has to be done police. You ask yourself, what capacity does the police have? You know the number of cases that the police have, murder, theft, armed robbery, kidnapping, abduction, all sorts of crises. Um, that so many cases that the police itself cannot take on hand. So they want to go dumble into that. So it will be very, very difficult. But as I said, the way forward is that uh, election tribunal that is uh, that is uh, being uh, put together. Uh, that the bill is uh, is uh, in the National Assembly, and it's for the National Assembly to be able to uh, come up and pass that bill. If they pass it in through the opposite both chambers of the National Assembly, the Senate and House of Representatives, if that is passed, that means that there's a special tribunal for uh, prosecution of of um, election of uh, offenses. If that is done, then you'll be sure that we can be able to get it right. But if it's going to go through the same process of our conventional courts, they are going to get uh, election uh, uh, practices or election uh, violence arrests fall within the uh, uh, the degrees of um, of the high courts, as it were. And if you go to the high courts, uh, you're going to see that they have so much uh, on their uh, on their table that they can't uh, they're having normal uh, because you're having financial cases then you're bringing uh, then they also have election um, cases because even if you go to the tribunal you see that you see most of these cases will end because just take a, a classical example the Osho state um, uh, election you know that the court of appeal has just given a judgment in favor of Adelike but it didn't end there they are going to the Supreme Court and that is the way it was so uh, yes the police may want to do what they to be very, very difficult under the current circumstances. All right, Chris, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we have uh, some interesting stories and more on the papers, but uh, for the want of time, we have to uh, leave it at that. So we appreciate you and look forward to having you again uh, next week. Thank you very much. Um, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Right. We have more discussions ahead. Of course, when we come back, uh, we'll look at uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission voting three billion now. Uh, to uh, take on the election petitions at the courts. We'll have an interesting uh, discussion this coming. Please do.